Hello there, lovely folks at YouTube, Ren here. So it's close enough to the beginning of April. It's March 31st. Um, I am recording this now. I'm gonna, sh by the time you see it, it will be April and it's close enough um, just to do my little April tour of the garden. I have gotten a lot of cleanup done. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to take my time with this one. A lot of the time I kind of, Lately, I've been kind of rushing through things, but I'm going to try and take my time and really talk about all the things that are popping up. We'll see how successful I am. Uh, Hades is out here with me, as always, so it, you may hear him in the background just being his god-awful pest of a self. So, just FYI. Um, so, let's start talking about the garden. So, um, you can see my son has done a really bang-up job cleaning up this little corner here. This is the cleanest it's been in years. He even raked out all the leaves that I tend to not rake out. I know, Hades. I know. I gotta stop to pet him for a second. Okay. So, um, there is, so some of this greenery here is the greenery that's left from the crocuses. You can see there's little bits of echinacea that are popping up, um, as well as my, um, monarda. This one is, uh, this one is the monarda didyma. So, and then of course there's more echinacea, more monarda over here. Um, this is my bigger of the two blueberries that I have, which has lots of little flowers on it. There is a little baby blueberry right here that I bought yeah, last year. Um, and this has some flowers that are getting ready. Yes, Hades, I know. Yeah, you gotta be in there too. And what Hades is rubbing up against right now is a blueberry that I lost for unknown reasons. Look at you. You're such a jerk. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Get filthy. Get filthy. Um, you can see next to the blueberries, of course, is my raspberries, which are starting to pop up. There is also something that's digging out here. I'm not sure whether it's a vole or a mole, but in any case, it's kind of a nuisance. I want to show you also, before we get too far, what's in my cold frame over here. I had some plants that I recently put back out. You can see I have it closed. It's really dusty, but when we open it up, you can see that's my three little baby mandrakes there. I just brought them back outside. I brought them in because we had below freezing temperatures. Um, I have two different types of prickly pear in here. Um, this little pot might have a peony in it. I dug it up from the front yard last fall and I'm not sure. I have some little pots here that had, they had some seedlings, but then they died back in the cold. So I just put some new seeds out there. Um, that guy is a clary sage. That one is a henbane. And that's my lemon verbena. So these are all in the cold frame. Some of them will come out when the weather is right, like my lemon, ver lemon verbena and my clary sage. Some of them, like the mandrakes and the henbane, I'll probably just leave in there. Um, because that henbane, oh my god, it gets eaten the fuck up by flea beetles, so. Here in the herb bed, you can see we have some spearmint popping back up again. Um, this is the new spearmint that I planted last year and ripped out some of my old spearmint. The old spearmint is still there, it's just growing along the steps and behind my hose and back along the hose that way, yeah, so. Experiment there. Lots of chives. This is a great time of year for chives, of course. I've got um, my now perennial fennel is growing right here. Um, my mulein that just popped up out of nowhere is just going crazy. Um, other than that, it's just basically a lot of weeds in this area that need to be dug up. There is some lemon balm under there that needs to be dug up that is in the place where it doesn't belong. This right here is the lemon balm where it does belong. So, lemon balm is a thug, as my mom always says. Apothecary Rose is starting to put out some new growth. You can see some of those nice little green leaves popping on it. Right there. Um, so, that's been pruned back a little bit. This Chunanthus tree has also been pruned back. Hasn't even leafed out yet, but it's always kind of late in the season to leaf out. So, um, vegetable beds here. So, you can see a little bit better here. Uh, my mystery creatures handiwork. I'm pretty sure that's a vole um, because I don't know. I think that's a vole. Can't say for sure. Hades, you're slacking. That's all I know. 
Um, a lot of this stuff probably will need to be replanted because of that cold snap, but you can see like the things that are growing here, these are actually my fava beans that I planted last fall and just for shits and giggles because I had some left over. Uh, I had a bunch of spinach in the middle here and then around the edges is there's some here that's a pea but there was also this stuff right here which is clover so there's a little bit of clover that's popping up in there it's the red clover which is um just for ground cover i do have some lettuce that has survived the cold here this bed really needs to be weeded i think it's been a good week week and a half since i touched it so of course all the burdock and dandelions have basically taken free reign but you can see i have some older peas here growing up and then this is my perennial scallion bed right here this bed right here is my asparagus bed i had to completely redig the whole damn thing because my son when he was being really helpful and cleaning everything up got a little too enthusiastic here and accidentally dug up every single one of my asparagus crowns thinking they were weeds so i had to replant all my asparagus crowns i salvaged them out of the compost and put them back in the bed but it means we probably won't get to harvest asparagus again for a couple of years unfortunately because it takes several years for it to really get established but you can see right here that's my first little baby asparagus showing it's showing its head there so it is coming back this guy right here this might be a rhubarb um let's see there it is I thought that the rhubarb had died off, but maybe it's still there. I don't know. So you can see I put the mulch down here to try and discourage Hades from rolling around in the dirt. And that has been minimally successful. I know, because you're a pest. You're a big pest. Strawberries here. Um, they're going to be, oh, look at that. They're already starting to bloom. There's a couple right there that have some little flowers getting ready. So, um, yes, they have been mostly weeded and mulched. There's a few things like this little dandelion here, of course, that I'll have to tend to, but most of this is actually strawberries. Apple trees. So you can see the one, the big one is actually blooming. It's always a little bit earlier than the others, but this one right here, it's getting ready sometime in the next few days, as long as it stays warm. That one, of course, is my Arkansas Black. This one is my Albemarle Pippin. Um, and then this one that is blooming. Look at that. Yeah. This is my, my Pippin, my son's Pippin. So you can see it's gotten hit pretty hard in some places by that frost that we had. It was a heavy frost. Like, it, not even a frost. It was a freeze. So... Uh, viburnum here desperately needs to be cut back. This is some of the area that still needs to be cleaned up. So, but it's got some, it's got some little buds on it. It's going to be blooming soon. You look at this. So that edger right there is just full of little viburnum shoots that have popped up. So that all needs to be dug out. That's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, hard to see back here. I'll bring it in close. Where are you? Right here. This stuff right here, that's a Baptisia. So that's going to be popping up soon. Um, my little tree there did not survive. There is a lemon balm hiding under there. Great. Another lemon balm, just what I need. Um, all this stuff here at my feet is Aster. Um, this stuff, gosh, I can't remember the name of this bush. It starts with a C. Anyway, yeah. It makes these like bottle brush blue flowers in the late summer. This one is cool. Yes, it's grass, but it's not just any grass. See that little flower there? That's very distinctive uh, flower. That's sweet grass. I, yes, and it, like, I started with one teeny tiny little plug that was planted. I don't know if you can see my little marker. It's kind of hiding in there, but um, I have one teeny tiny little plug, like a one inch by one inch plug that I planted in that spot two years ago. And now this grass has just spread all over this whole area and I freaking love it. So um, I will probably be talking about that maybe next week. We'll see. Got to make that video first, but behind the sweet grass, of course, that big clumpy grassy stuff is the, um, that's the foliage from my um, Tate Tate. Narcissi. Um, the foliage is like way bigger than the flowers are. 
that will die back sometime over the next few weeks and just leave an empty spot in its place as it goes dormant over the summer. And then of course behind that you can see my blackberries that are starting to leaf out. Mm. Further over this way you can see one of my daylilies that's really bushing out again. Um, and then I have two more mulane. These I actually salvaged out of one of my flower pots and put in here and they haven't died yet so hopefully they'll stay there. Oh, lots of stuff that needs to be cleaned out here, but hiding in here, I actually have, you can see right here, this is a salvia that I got at the hardware store. Just one of the decorative salvias. I got that on clearance for $2. There's another one here. And then further over this way, right here, this one right here is my wood betony. So that one's coming back well too. That's my Festiva Maxima Peony, which is going crazy. It's going to need to be given some supports pretty soon. God damn, there's a lot of stuff to be cleaned out of here though. All of that, um, there's more, more uh, Monarda back there. That's all the stems that you're seeing that flopped over, so I need to clear out all that dead stuff. And then hiding right in here amongst all this speedwell is my little whorehound plant. It looks like my, um, and it's just hop didn't survive I, yet again, so I need to find another place for it because it just doesn't like any of these spots in the backyard that I've put it in yet. Pots have been reworked. So this is um, horseradish right here that's trying to flower. It looks like I only have one horseradish root left in there. I used to have like three or four of them. I'm probably going to leave that one be this year and just buy my horseradish at the grocery store. Um, Hyssop used to be in this plant. I moved it over to this one and gave it a fresh, um, you know, fresh bed of potting soil, cleaned everything up. Rosemary was getting severely root bound. So I opened that up. I cut back a lot of the root stock, took some pieces off of it to transplant into my front yard. We'll see how they do. What was left, I pruned back pretty hard and put back in the pot. Yes. So uh, video cut me off. Um, yes, what was left I pruned back and put it back in the pot um, for this rosemary. We'll see how it does. It's, I mean, it's doing well so far, so hasn't showed any real significant signs of stress since I repotted it, so. Ah, uh, let's talk about some of these herbs. So, my Boulasia, a lot of the top seems to have died back, but there is new growth down on the bottom, so that looks like it probably will come back. The root plant, like, <laughs> Looking closer at this, I realize I actually have three root plants. So this one is doing well. This one is probably dead. This is the one that got hit really hard by the, um, the caterpillars last year. But hiding underneath that one, there's like a third one right here and that seems to be doing okay. So I'm probably just gonna dig out all of this one right here and leave the other two to fill in that space. You can see my new rose right here has two of the old leaves on it and then a bunch of new growth. This one is an ebb tide floribunda rose. So that's exciting. Um, this plant right here is my um, greater burnet, Sanguisorba officinalis. That's a not a common plant, but it's quite enjoyable. Makes really neat looking flowers. There's my chamomile, ready to take back with a vengeance. This little amelanchier tree, it tries its best, it really does, but it's growing so slowly. I don't think it's very happy here. All right. Right here, you can just see some of the new buds starting to pop for my Ella campaign. That's the Inula Helenium. Get that clover out of there. So, it's all this little red stuff here. That's all the new buds coming off of this really, really old rootstock. So after this year in the fall, I'll probably harvest that one again because it'll be due. That's the one that I can see. There should be like two or three more hiding somewhere under all of this snake berry and weeds that we have here. I do have a licorice plant right here. This is the little stem for it. And you can just barely see some of the little buds for it. That I'll probably move to somewhere with a little more sun. It's not looking super excited to be here. It's, um, it's never really gotten more than a foot tall in the two years I've had it, so I think it needs a better spot. This makes me sad because all I'm seeing here is weeds. I see absolutely no sign of my yarrow plants. 
So I'm probably going to have to get new yarrow plants this year, and that's disappointing. Because normally that stuff grows like a weed. I don't know why it died, but it seems to have done that. But this stuff is doing well, um, despite the weeds. And grass, freaking grass. Um, anyway, this is my Arnica. So, uh, Arnica, I think I have the Arnica Chamasonisis. So. Um, you can see my foxglove here getting ready to bloom soon. There's a big one there. There's another one there. There's one there. There's a few of them back there. Um, the foxglove, I just let it do, like, I don't know. It, it blooms, it seeds itself, it dies back, and then it pops back up wherever it feels like. If it's in a slightly less opportune spot, like that one was actually in one of my vegetable beds, then I'll just dig it up and move it into an empty spot in here, and the cycle continues. So, I used to have Angelica there. Um, I don't think I'm going to have Angelica this year. I'm going to have to find out something else to put in that spot. You can see some of the little nubs here of my variegated Solomon seal. It's this stuff right here. So that's getting ready to pop up. It's all over this area like crazy. There's also lots of, I don't know if you can see like that little ferny looking thing. And there's another one back there behind that foxglove. These are the big ones right here. That's all valerian. So, and there's several more behind it. These two big ones are the primary spots, um, but this one seeds like crazy as well. The good news with that one is that basically anything that has seeded in a spot I don't want it, I dig it up once it gets to a decent size, and then I have valerian root and I don't feel guilty about it. You can see my blood root back there hiding in the corner, that very distinctive palmate leaf, and there's one little flower just barely hanging on there. And then of course my elder here, putting out new growth. I had to do some pretty serious pruning. You can see one of the trunks that I had to cut back there. Um, that whole trunk had just died back, so I cut it back to where all the dead stuff was gone, and now hopefully it'll fill in. Let's turn around and look on this side here. So you can see one of my other daylilies here. There's another peony back there. That one's a pink peony. I don't know the name of the specific cultivar. I'm probably going to have to move that one because it doesn't like being in the shade right there. So And it does get kind of shady back over here. Um, let's, let's step over this stuff. So right here, of course, this is all tansy. Tansy is, usually does really well this time of year and then kind of dies back again. Um, you know, once this, um, red bud fills in some more and it shades it. So this is another one I'm probably going to think about moving. And then you can see all my mugwort there. The mugwort doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> it does not give a fuck about the shade. It's just kind of like brain on. So... You can see these guys right here, um, that one and then the other one there, those are both agrimony. And, um, oh, there's another agrimony that's popping up there. I'm going to have to get rid of that one. Hiding under here, I don't think we're going to see any yet, but soon. Oh, I can see some on the other plant. That's my um, marshmallow, so that's popping up there. Let's see. This one right here, there it is. I knew it was in there somewhere. That's feverfew. Kind of see them. And then this guy right here, that's Vervain, right there. And then of course I have my Comfrey over here. Um, my Comfrey is actually a, the, the hybrid. It's the hybrid between the Officinale and the Russian Comfrey, which means that it's way less aggressive than other Comfreys. So if you're looking for a Comfrey and you don't want to be digging Comfrey out of everything everywhere, I highly recommend it. I've had that Comfrey there for like five or six years and it stayed very neatly in that one spot. It has spread, you know, like you can see, like it's, it's way bigger than it used to be. But it's a very polite Comfrey, which is unusual for Comfreys. So hybrids, highly recommend. You can see my Longwort here. It's, it's pretty much done blooming. But um, it might come up with another flush of flowers in a little bit. Oh, one of my daffodils behind it. It's my little teeny tiny um, iris right there. I have no idea what kind of iris it is. That's the one I got from my mom. And she got it from her mom. And her mom might have gotten it for her mom. I don't know. It's been in the family for a long time. You can see the hellebores are actually just about finishing up here. You can see they're actually, some of these are starting to set seed. 
And you can see the fruits of last year's seeds right there, all these little baby, baby hellebore seedlings everywhere. Um, the ones that survive, I'll probably be digging up and moving into the spot kind of like there. You can see that empty spot under my gardenias. That's where they're going to live. I want them to fill in that way, not this way. Um, and then this foliage here is the leftovers from my um, Galanthus uh, snowdrops. That's the common name of it, yes. This stuff right here, not you, your agrimony, but this stuff right here, um, that is a uh, anemone. I don't remember which specific species of anemone, but it's a spring blooming anemone, so that should be blooming shortly. Speaking of blooming, you can see my chain anomalies. Flowering quince is going gangbusters. This is one that's really popular with the bees right now. There's not a lot that's really blooming at this time of year. It's basically this, the apple trees, and then of course my red bud has some blooms on it. And that's what they're mostly going for. Hiding under all those dead stems is my peppermint waiting to um, attack the rest of my garden. This stuff's filling in nicely here. That is my um, meadow sweet, Philipendula umaria. So I have another couple of other little ones here, but this is the big one right here. So that's one I'll probably talk about this summer when it starts to bloom. That's a really cool plant. You can see the pond is running. I might need a little water soon, but it's doing okay. The problem is I haven't been running my heat pumps and the condensation from my heat pumps is usually what keeps my pond full up in the summertime but um it's been really nice we haven't been running the heat pumps so we don't have any condensation so the pond isn't getting full but it's going to be raining too so no fish in there yet soon soon this right here this is my red vein sorrel this stuff is delicious and i love to eat as much of it as i can in the springtime i'm probably going to put a few more out here there's another valerian hiding in there that's going to be pulled for sure Mm -hmm. This moss is starting to lift up a little bit. That's annoying. Oh, there's a weed in here. Somewhere amongst all the weeds. I have some um, Lily of the Valley back here, but I don't think it's showing up yet. However, what is showing up and is very exciting. Look at this. Look at this. This is all my... Um... Oh gosh, I'm always... Gallium odoratum, Waldmeister, God bless it, I'm, think, I'm blanking on the common name on this one again. It's used in Maywine, I don't know why I always do this. I can always think of every name for it except for the most common name. I'm literally, I'm like, my brain is spitting up all kinds of facts about this plant. Like, the, the scent comes from coumarin, which is a natural anticoagulant. And, like, it will come up with everything except the fucking name. But anyway, this plant. <laughs> I'll probably, when I go back and edit the video, I'll put the name on it, on, like, label it or something. But it's that plant. Um, Gallium odoratum. There you go. Okay. Um, and then I've got my hostas here. Back on that trellis there is a honeysuckle. It's, it's doing its thing. We'll see. But yeah, there's, oh my gosh, there's a lot. My Wigella's starting to put some leaves out. That's going to be blooming next. I have a Japanese maple there behind it that's also starting to leaf out. This rose desperately needs to be pruned back because it's highly aggressive. It's not a rose that I planted. It's a rose that the previous owner of the home had planted. And I've tried to dig it out like eight different times and it just keeps coming back. And eventually I threw in the white flag and gave up and just let it, let it live. So, um, yeah, that was a longer tour than usual. But you know what? Y'all deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, look at Hades. He's sleeping in the pile of leaves. Did you find a little bed, Hades? Did you find a little comfy bed? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I'm going to end it here. Just want to thank y'all for watching. You don't want me booping your snoot. Okay. Anyway, I hope you have a pleasant day. I hope you get to go out and enjoy this lovely springtime. 
I hope this video finds you well, and we both will see you again soon.